Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Today we're checking out a lo-fi mic. And uh, get this, it's actually a dB meter. So there's an output on the built-in microphone of the dB meter, it's like a Radio Shack meter. And I figured, you know what? I wonder if I can get the signal out of it and would it sound cool or not? So we're gonna be checking that out today. It's a definitely a really lo-fi sound. Do a little bit of a kind of a mix a tutorial on kind of what I do to the sound to get this final sound. So here's the final sound and what we're going to be creating today. Oh yeah, this is really cool. I really like this sound. I mean, this could have a use for sure. And it's a mic that we have, I mean, most of us have had just laying around because we like to check our DB when mixing, things like that. And I realized one day, I'm like, you know what? It has an output. And I don't know why uh, this meter has an output, but it does. And so I figured, well, I think I have an RCA cable somewhere. And then it turns out that I had an RCA little mixer, like an A and B channel, and it mixes into just a, a single mono uh, balanced uh, run to a preamp. So that's how I converted it from unbalanced to balanced into my preamp. Uh, you could also just you know make a cable. Depending on the setting that you had for the dB, um, it increased the gain of the mic, which is kind of cool. And so in the demo, you'll notice that the meter is jumping and I could kind of gauge like how hot and how crunchiness I was getting the sound right there just visually looking at it. And so for this test today, it was like 100 dB. Uh, I tried 90, you know, 80, 70. Really, it's about 100 for drums and maybe for something else you can use a different dB setting. But it is kind of like a gain setting um, within the mic. And then of course, I'm sending it to the preamp. I don't think I really used much gain at all at the preamp. So let's go into the control room and I'll walk you through what the original sounds like and how I got this final sound today. Okay, so what we've actually been hearing is the final product, the final mix. But I wanna show you the original sound and then show you how I built the sound. So here's the original. I figured, you know, we gotta we gotta balance this out. So I went for some EQ with kind of a pull text out EQ, super big boost and some attenuation. I'm kind of hoping that it kind of cuts out some of that 110, 120 kind of muddy stuff, but it gives me that big low end and the kick and the toms. But the most important part is probably this high attenuation here, but I'm just turning down some of those really harsh highs. So I don't know if I want quite that much uh, low end because I'm trying to go for a lo-fi sound. I'm not trying to get a hi-fi sound out of a lo-fi mic, although that would be a pretty cool trick. So I'll just kind of keep it, you know, about right there. And in general, that's like kind of a balanced, a little, at least a little more balanced of a sound, right? Now my compressor can have a little bit of a better shot at doing something useful, I think. So I'm giving the compressor something nicer to work with. I thought about different compressors I could use, then I realized I still have some of these pedals hooked up. And so I figured why not? Like an 1176 style compressor would be perfect for this job. So I went in and created an in-out plugin. So out number seven into a reamp box into the Cali 76 out of here into a DI and back into a preamp. The preamp is input seven. And so 
Here's what this sounds like. This approach here is more of like, I'm trying to pull the transients out of something that's really kind of smeared already. It's not very good transients, they're not punchy because they're, they're so overdriven. And so I'm using a slow attack and kind of a, a slow release because I don't want it to breathe too much. If I go like this, faster release, uh, the compressor will cover, you'll hear more of that room sound. But I want the attack, the I should say transients of the drums to really be kind of punchy. Then low ratio, I usually find that low ratio allows the drums to be bigger. However, the high ratios will let a compressor breathe more. It'll be kind of, um, you know, very clingy uh, to the sounds. And that would be great for a fast release. But for this, I'm going with the low ratio. And when this uh, light is yellow, it's a very, very high dB reduction here. So we, we really are doing a lot of uh, reduction here. So this is kind of approach number one. It's all wet sound. It's all compressed sound. Here's again what it sounds like. So we're getting transients back that aren't really, maybe they're there, but it, we're just making it punchier. See, so that tom, the snare, you can really hear how it sounds like I'm hitting harder, right? Okay, so here's kind of approach two I've been playing around with today, and it's a little bit more aggressive and crazier, which I think is pretty cool, but a faster attack, faster release, higher ratio. So it breathes, it, it, it kind of clings to the sound, right? And here's what this sounds like. <laughs> So this was cool, but I wanted to experiment with this dry wet here. So I just kind of looked at the meters and I set a level a little conservative and then I added about 6 dB. And that's when I kind of knew I was like maybe 50-50. So here is kind of some dry mixed in with the very aggressive, very non-attacky compressed sound. So that's kind of one method I played around with. Then the other method, kind of a, a, a final third method, is to do this really aggressive stuff, but then set it so it's really only getting the tops, right? So maybe, I don't know, five, six dB of reduction instead of 20 or 30 dB. Uh, so here's what that sounds like. Okay, so we'll just go with that, right? Uh, they're all pretty cool. Now, from here, I was like, what am I gonna do about these symbols? They're so, so bad. So I went for a de -esser. And I did kind of two in a row. And then I also took out some with EQ at four and a half K. Pretty aggressive cut there and kind of wide, well, kind of a medium Q. So here's what it sounds like with some de and a little EQ. So what's cool about this, and I didn't say it in a previous video about mixing with pedals, but you can use everything with one hand. So you can work the mouse and you can work the entire compressor and you're in the sweet spot the entire time. So it's actually a, kind of a cool thing to not even have to look at stuff when you're doing it. You just kind of move your fingers by feel and you watch the screen. Kind of cool.
this is a really cool sound. It's something that I've probably looked over hundreds of times. Never thought to actually use the stupid thing as a microphone. But I thought it sounded kind of cool, you know? Uh, I'd love to know what you think of this. Uh, I'll be hanging out in the comments below if you have any ideas or if you like this video. I'd love to hear your, um, you know, your results if you guys try any of this stuff. So hit me up in the comments below on your thoughts.